Welcome back, beautiful, amazing human beings. And just a reminder before we start off today, what you're stressing about right now won't even matter in a few years. So calm down, relax, and empower yourself with real information, which we try to provide you here on We Are Change in our daily videos called What the Hell Really Happened? Okay, sometimes they're not daily because I'm really busy, but regardless of that fact, that was a little cheesy, but we're moving forward with the top news that happened today. And today is August 1st, 2017, and and we will be talking about the very confusing, duplicitous Donald Trump moves, not only with his cabinet, but most importantly with his foreign policy. An evil military industrial complex corporation with ties to child trafficking and child sex abuse, which is now closer to the White House than ever before. Of course, Russia's latest actions against the United States and war hawks pushing for war with North Korea. Now, the first story that I wanted to talk about today is Donald Trump's controversial move to stop funding the rebel groups inside of Syria that was just made a few days ago. Now there's new information coming to light right now showing how Donald Trump was specifically impacted from a disturbing video he saw where the Syrian rebels that were being funded by US taxpayers through the secret CIA program beheaded and murdered a little child on video. It is reportedly this video that made Donald Trump end this very controversial CIA program. But you would think think that this program that costed taxpayers one billion dollars per year that hasn't achieved anything that only prolonged the war in Syria that only aided and helped arm ISIS and al-Nusra and al-Qaeda inside of Syria our sworn enemies of the West similar programs that the Pentagon itself had that spent 500 million dollars per year in order to just train four or five fighters inside of Syria a program which weapons flow from these rebels right into the hands of ISIS and Al-Qaeda, you would think that the program being such an utter disaster in itself would make Donald Trump stop this program, but no, it was a video, which I think is why Donald Trump initially continued this program all the way up till June. And this story does seem legitimate, especially after it was supposedly Ivanka Trump who watched the videos of Syrian children dying from a supposed chemical attack with Donald Trump that sparked Donald Trump to attack the Syrian regime just a few weeks ago. So we're seeing a trend here. And by the way, it's very important to note here that one of the UK's largest broadcasters, Channel 4, tried to delete their video of this incident and cover it up after they released it. Now, Donald Trump did the right thing. Thing here, but it was inevitable for this program not to continue. Not even for the simple fact that the CIA rebels were fighting the Pentagon rebels inside of Syria, but the very fact that we were financing our very worst enemy. And finally, Donald Trump did the right thing, but the fact that he's acting emotionally because of this and not rationally is troublesome and will lead to future problems for the United States. As case in point, the Pentagon right now is offering plans to arm Ukraine. Ukrainian troops and rebel groups in order to go after pro-Russian separatists inside of Ukraine. Now, if you remember, there was a massive civil war inside of Ukraine that ultimately went down to a proxy war between the pro-Russian Ukrainians that were aligned with Russia and the anti-Russian Ukrainians that were aligned with the European Union and the United States. That faction has severely damaged ties between Russia and the United States, and with this latest move is only angering Russia even more, and the situation is becoming more desperate and intense as we're learning how the Ukrainian separatists, the pro-Russian side in Donetsk, are now claiming to have created their own country, which they are calling Little Russia, which of course the Ukrainians of the pro-European Union side and the US side are very dissatisfied with and do not see as a legitimate territory, which of course will lead to future conflict in the region. Now, this is not the only test between US and Russian relations. As we know, Donald Trump has said that Russia has meddled in the elections against him and now supports sanctions against Russia because of that. Russia has responded and counterpunched on these new US sanctions with diplomatic moves and actions that are the harshest since the waning days of the Cold War, with many foreign policy experts now claiming that we are in a Cold War 2.0, 
and that Putin has given up on the White House and Donald Trump, seeing no future collaboration with the United States as these two nuclear-powered countries are now at odds at each other more than ever. Since Putin responded against the sanctions put on his country, Trump has been silent on this entire matter. But there's new scandals that the White House is dealing with right now, especially that the mainstream media is concentrating on, and that is the fact that their new communications director was just fired after being at the White House for just 11 days. Scaramucci, the White House communications director, was reportedly escorted off the grounds of the White House after reportedly being fired, which of course is not a good look for the Trump administration, since it shows a lot of instability inside of the White House, but most importantly, as the mainstream media rejoices in this moment and uses this as a main factor to go after Donald Trump's legitimacy, they are completely forgetting and of course not bringing up how Donald Trump's new picks around his cabinet are mainly people from Wall Street or the U.S. military industrial complex. Now, why the White House press communication director was recently fired, that is not known, but he did go off on a very expletive tirade to a New Yorker reporter where he said, quote, I want to ducking kill all the leakers. He also went on a tirade against Ryan Priebus, who was also recently canned and replaced by John Kelly, officially by Donald Trump days ago. And reportedly, it was John Kelly, the new White House chief of staff for Donald Trump, that made the decision to fire him. Now, it is clear that John Kelly is trying to impose order at the White House, and he has been mainly praised by the mainstream media, which automatically brings red flags for me. And if you look at John Kelly, he's not only connected with the military and the Department of Homeland Security, but the very controversial military industrial complex corporation, DynCorp. In 2015, John Kelly earned $166 and $666 from DynCorp as an advisor to this mega government connected corrupt institution that all of all other things was caught in Afghanistan hiring dancing boys to entertain tribal leaders, was involved in a sex slavery scandal in Bosnia in 1999 with its own employees accused of raping and buying and selling of girls as young as 12, where their own employees never faced any legal consequences for, and the scandals and investigations that this corporation has been under are massive. And too much to get into now, but right now, Donald Trump's White House Chief of Staff was recently on their payroll. Now, this is an issue that everyone should be concerned about, but yet the mainstream media and the pro-Trump alternative media don't want to bring that up to you. Now, moving on in more corrupt military industrial complex news, it's important to note that the United States has wasted over $14 trillion on war within the past three decades, and that war is a major business. It is not humanitarian work. It is not meant to spread democracy, to spread freedom and liberation on people. It is meant to make people rich, and that's exactly what it's been doing. And that's why people push for more war and more conflict, and we're seeing that exemplified with the recent geopolitical moves that are happening all around the world right now. Just recently, the U.S. Navy fired warning shots at Iranian vessels and are calling for more sanctions on Iran. North Korea looks like the most opportunistic place to bomb next, as they just carried out, quote, unprecedented test of their submarine missile systems that, of course, the U.S. Pentagon is raising alarms about, using it as a justification to expand their military budgets, their troops, and their presence inside of South Korea right now, and trying to mobilize the Chinese to move and allow them to make a decisive action against North Korea. To which the Chinese respond, we're not cooperating, which will be a very fascinating geopolitical foreign policy objective that we will see unfold in the next few days that, of course, we will cover here on youtube.com forward slash we are change. If there's any news stories that you thought I missed, let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, share it. And most importantly, just so you know, we're not financed by any corporate or government entity. We're only financed by you. And if you want to see more videos like this and our expansion as a real independent news source, that's not either left nor right support us. And there's many ways you could do that, not only just by donating to us, 
but by simply going to accounts like like steemit.com forward slash at Luke we are change where literally with your upvotes I'm able to earn cryptocurrencies weird online money that I could then transfer to Bitcoin that I could then transfer to actual dollars that sustain this operation I love you guys check out steemit.com it's great for anyone even if you're a content creator or just the content viewer and yeah I love you thank you again so much for watching